What's up guys, I hope you're doing well. Now, it seems like the F1 controversies are not going away soon, and well, tend to happen a lot. And today we'll be looking at yet another, this time not between drivers, but a bit more intense. Now here's the thing, F1 has threatened to take legal action towards the FIA. So what in the sports world is going on? Well, stick around till the end of the video as we analyze the situation here. And without further ado, let's dive into it. F1 FIA Controversy Origin now, according to sources familiar with the situation, the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund has considered expanding its portfolio of sports investments to include the Formula One Motor Racing Series. Negotiations for a potential deal broke down in the early stages in 2018 because Formula One's owner, Liberty Media Corp, was not interested in selling the high-profile franchise, which the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia valued at well over $20 billion, including debt. Okay. So we do know that Saudi Arabia has made significant investments in various sporting events as part of the country's effort to become more open to Western-style forms of entertainment under the leadership of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And in recent years, it has acquired a stake in the English Premier League football club Newcastle United FC and serves as a host venue for major boxing, golf, and Formula One events. Critics have dubbed the effort sports washing believing that they are an attempt to divert attention away from the country's record on human rights. Lewis Hamilton, a seven-time Formula One championship winner, stated last year that he felt obligated to speak out about human rights while competing in Saudi Arabia. Buying F1 would be a huge step in the right direction since Liberty Media, owned by billionaire John Malone, purchased the sport in a $4.4 billion deal in 2017. The sport's popularity has risen and Liberty Media has attempted to foster the growth of a new generation of fans by expanding Formula One's presence in both Asia and the United States, as well as the introduction of a direct-to-consumer streaming service. Formula One's owners have also placed a strong emphasis on the Middle East. During the 2023 season, the Middle East will host four races, the first two of which are scheduled to take place in March in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Formula One and Saudi Aramco, which is the world's largest oil producer, signed a historic sponsorship agreement in 2020. The Liberty Media tracking stock, which represents the Formula One business, has more than doubled in price over the previous four years, resulting in a market value of approximately $15.2 billion. Mohammed Ben Sulayem the FIA's president, Mohammed bin Sulayem, responded to reports that a Saudi prince had offered a staggering $20 billion for the rights to control Formula One and Liberty Media. The prince, according to these reports, was attempting to gain control of both entities. Sulayem called the price inflated in his tweet and advised any potential buyers to use common sense before making such a purchase. He repeatedly referred to the FIA as the custodians of motorsport throughout his speech. He stated that anyone interested in such a deal must develop a clear and sustainable plan for the sport, and that it's not necessary to bring in a lot of money. In a tweet, Mohammed Ben Sulayem explained the dangers of inflation in the sport as well as the price of the sport itself. According to him, it has the potential to impact sports promoters, hosting fees, and a variety of other commercial costs that the sport is required to bear. This, in turn, will have an impact on the prices that fans pay to see races all over the world, potentially leading to a loss of fan base. Now, since Liberty Media completed its $4.6 billion purchase of Formula One rights in 2017, there have been outrageous ways in which the sport has expanded. Since the premiere of Drive to Survive on Netflix, there has been a significant increase in the number of people following Formula One. Furthermore, competitions held in more modern venues and promotional efforts have unquestionably increased the value of the sport. However, according to the president of the FIA, this value has not yet reached $20 billion. The Legal Notice In light of these bid claims and Ben Suleyem's tweets, Formula One executives have accused Ben of interfering in the alleged sale of the sport, which is, well, quite unacceptable. According to Sky Sports News, senior F1 officials were outraged by his comments, and now legal counsel has written to the FIA to warn them that his tweets had infringed on their rights in an unacceptable way. In a letter first reported by Sky News and seen by Sky Sports News, 
Sasha Woodward Hill, the General Counsel for Formula One, and Renee Wilm, the Chief Legal and Administrative Officer of Liberty Media Corporation, the controlling shareholder of Formula One, accused the FIA, the governing body of motorsport, of going beyond the boundaries of its mandate. The letter has also been distributed to all 10 Formula One teams. The FIA has not yet responded to the Sky Sports News request for a comment or response. The letter warned the FIA that under the terms of a 100-year contract, Formula One has the exclusive rights to exploit commercial rights in the FIA Formula One World Championship. Furthermore, the FIA has stated unequivocally that it will not take any actions that could be construed as detrimental to the ownership, management, or exploitation of those rights. Woodward Hill and Wilms stated in their letters that the FIA president's suggestion that any potential purchaser of the Formula One business must consult with the FIA is incorrect. Furthermore, it was claimed that Ben Sulayem had exceeded the FIA's authority by stating that anyone or any organization that commented on the value of a listed entity or its subsidiaries, particularly if they claimed or implied that they possessed inside information while doing so, risked causing substantial damage to that entity's shareholders and investors, not to mention the potential for serious regulatory consequences. Michael Andretti Okay, so wait, is Michael Andretti gonna be the next person to stir up some trouble? Well, following the tweets posted by Ben Sulian, a number of parties came forward to express their interest in joining Formula One, the most notable of which was Michael Andretti. He took Ben Sulian's comments as an indication that his team would soon be able to join the rest of the competitors on the grid. He went as far as announcing a new partnership with General Motors, which included the Cadillac brand, and argued that Formula One could not afford to overlook him. However, there was a lack of response from the existing team, with only a few cautiously positive comments coming from team owners such as Toto Wolf and Zach Brown. But despite this, there was a lot of excitement surrounding the new format. Ben Suleyem's tweets expressing his dissatisfaction with the reception that allegedly was given to Andretti and Cadillac by the teams surprised the Formula One teams, and the teams did not issue a public response to his statements. However, they were quite upset behind closed doors. They were especially aggravated by the policy governing access to the Formula One grid. Also, the teams believed that General Motors was more of a sponsor than a manufacturer that could take the sport to the next level. Well, this is quite accurate considering that GM sponsored the sport. Following the recent tweets, Formula One had made it abundantly clear to Ben Sulian that he needs to refrain from interfering in matters that are not related to him. The teams were also annoyed by his initial reluctance to sanction more sprint races. During his time in office as president, Ben Sulian has demonstrated, on the whole, that he is prone to becoming easily agitated, and because of this, there's a greater possibility of an increase in tension within the paddock, which may make the upcoming season exciting not only on the track, but also off of it. Well, we'll be here to keep you updated with anything that comes about, which means that you should subscribe to the channel and not miss any of our content. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Done already? Okay, let's wind up. F1 and FIA's future. So what does the future of F1 and FIA's relationship look like? Well, there have been times when the relationship between Formula One and the FIA has been strained, particularly due to the controversies that occurred in 2017 and, well, now this. But despite all the challenges, the two organizations have a long history of cooperating and have made efforts to keep their relationship steady. And it's pretty evident that in recent years, Formula One and the FIA have engaged in ongoing conversations regarding the future course of the sport. These conversations have covered topics such as the sport's long-term viability, the regulation of costs, and the development of innovative technologies. We could anticipate that the relationship between the two organizations will continue to develop in the future. However, the ultimate goal will stay the same, to promote and regulate the sport of Formula One racing in a way that is safe, fair, and environmentally friendly. So yeah, every relationship must have a couple of glitches, and that's what makes this sport. Well, an F1 in this case. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section down below, and we'll see you in the next video. So, see you guys then.